Hey everyone, welcome back to the studio. Today I want to show you how I can photograph a liquor bottle like this one and go from the basics to something a little bit better and finally to a pro level e-commerce shoot. Now to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is take a picture in auto, oh, no! but I want to show you what we're starting with. To get started, I put the bottle on a white table in front of a white wall, but it looks gray because cameras average the exposure to about 18%, and we need to take manual control. Alright, so I've taken the camera out of auto and set it to manual settings to expose for the ambient lighting. Just going from auto to manual gives us a lot more control of the image. All right, so the first change you can do to improve product photography is have a less distracting background. So I've taken the table and wall scenario and changed it to a seamless roll of paper. And this is what it looks like. With a solid background, we have a great starting point for product photography. So with the background taken care of, we can focus on the lighting. The first off-camera light most people go to is a speed light. These are inexpensive, and this one I think I got for $60 on Amazon and used for quite a bit of time. Okay, so with the speed light pointed at the product, this is what we get. At first glance, you probably think this image is worse, and that's because of the shadow. But if you compare before and after and take a closer look, the increased light power allows us to have greater depth of field, and a directional source allows us to reduce ambient bounce. All right, so the next level of lighting would be an umbrella diffusing the light. The larger surface area of the umbrella allows for a much more diffused background, getting rid of the shadow problems we had. But if you take a closer look at the top, having a large light source bounces light everywhere and we lose the benefit of a direct light source. While the umbrella might not have you covered, I have just the modifier that will. And that is a strip box. Before we move on, I want to note that photography equipment quickly gets expensive, but if you're just getting started, you don't need to sell any body parts. Speed lights are an affordable way to get started, with a variety of modifiers available through adapters. I'll put some links in the video description below. Moving forward, I'll be using ProPhoto equipment. So this is what it looks like with a strip light. A strip box is a hybrid between a large surface area to create soft light and a closed back design to focus light in one direction and reduce ambient spill. Now there's still a directional shadow, but that can be balanced by going from one strip light to two. Now, this is probably the most common lighting setup for bottles in e-commerce. Symmetrical strip lights on a seamless, and this is what you get. With a pair of strips, the product is evenly lit and there are no distractions from other light sources like bounce in the room. A two strip light and seamless backdrop is the easiest way to get started in e-commerce photography. If you're happy with the results, I guess you can stop here and I'll see you next week. This video is all about leveling up your skills. If you're just beginning, then the two light setup I just showed you is a great place to start creating. But if you already have some experience and want suggestions on improving technique, let's keep going. The biggest drawback of this lighting setup is that it does not flatter a translucent subject. Essentially, because light can shine through it, to best showcase the product, we need to shine light through the background. And we can't do that if the background's a piece of paper. So let's swap it out for a softbox. I changed out the seamless paper for a light and it looks great, right? Adding a backlight has two key benefits. First, color accuracy. You'll see the bottle is a lot less muddy. Second, we get rid of the cross light shadows on a surface because it's filled in by the backlight. Well, what if instead of chartreuse, we had champagne? What you can see here is while we still have that green translucency with the backlight and we have an even background and we have those telltale lights on either side, if you take a look at the base of the bottle, that's where we run into a problem. You start to see a white glow creeping up the bottle and that's the reflection of the table we're on. So to truly highlight the product, we can't have it be distracted by the surface it's on. Okay, so now the table is gone and you will see Without a table, there's no reflection on the bottom. Let's jump back to the chartreuse bottle and take a shot. The tiny table perfects the bottle, but it adds to post-production if you want a seamless background. But fixing a background is easier than fixing a bottle. 
we fixed the background, got rid of the table, what's next? Well, it's time to modify the modifiers. Let's take a closer look at our product. Now it's translucent, so the background is doing a great job shining its color through. But if you take a closer look, the reflection of the glass surface is a mirror image of the strip boxes. So what can we do to improve the highlights on the glass? Let's give the glass something else to reflect. Instead of two strips, how about two gradients? First, I move the lights back and position them at an angle, but touching a sheet of diffusion. The gradients take care of the reflection, but what about the refraction? It looks like the bottle is very thick because of the black lines. If we move the set back, we will increase the relative size of the background light and make the glass appear more light and airy, but now it's a little bit flat. Without any further ado, this is the final product straight out of camera. I combined a variety of different techniques to flatter the product as best as possible. And this is our pro setup. It consists of four lights, a variety of modifiers, and even in addition to the lens. Here's a lighting diagram of all of the changes to the setup. And to make the most sense of it, let's walk you through it. Starting from the bottom, I introduced a small white flexi instead of a baby wall plate as a hybrid between a white table for in-camera reflections and a small table for no bounds. The next upgrade was to the background light. Instead of a solid white softbox, you can see it's now gradient. This was accomplished by putting a strip light behind a diffuser and allowing the light to radiate out. Because we have a tight focal length, the camera still sees a white background, but the bottle liquid refracts the full gradient and creates a sense of volume. The left side of the bottle is mostly unchanged, with a gradient created by touching a strip light to a diffusion panel. Because having two symmetrical gradients seemed a little flat to me, I added a specular strip light to the right using a 1x4 strip box and a 4 inch strip mask. For extra fill, I used the table used previously as a balance on the right. And finally, to highlight the label, we added a fourth light. This comprised of a Profoto B10 Plus, a grid, a polarizing gel, and a snoot to really hone in the light on the bottle and a CPL filter on the lens to get rid of any reflections. Now that it's set up, it's easy to create a catalog of images just by replacing the product. Catalog photography is usually done in this method called drop and pop. Once you perfect the lighting, all you need to do is swap out the product. We've come a long way from just the basics, but there's always room for improvement. There's levels for hero shots, and even advertising. But let's save that for next time. And there we have it. That's how we can go from a basic e-commerce shop to something that is a lot more elaborate. And let me know in the comments below if you want to know more about some of the techniques I used, or if you have ideas for future videos. You can press the like button or subscribe if you want to see more content going forward. All right, that's the end of the video, and it's time to drink all this booze. Cheers. <laughs> A huge difference in contrast of the label because there's no table. Yeah, that rhymed. Oh, heads up, blooper reel. The lights won't go off until I make them go off. I have the power.